Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fantasy Football. It's time for Game Week 8 Preview. Now before we get onto that though, let's have a quick look at Game Week 7 and see how well my team did. Um, so basically, I've got a lot of things to talk about in this video. So this video might be a little bit longer than usual, but there is so much stuff to be said so many transfers and plans and strategies I'm thinking about and I kind of need your thoughts as well. So what I'm going to do is quickly do like an overview of Game Week 7, talk about my players, which players I could have done better and then we'll go on to my team for Game Week 8 but the main thing that I really want to kind of talk about in this video is basically a little plan to game week eight and game week nine. So for game week seven, as you can see, I've got 64 points. Now it is above the average, which is fantastic because this is always the plan to get over the average um, so we can start ranking up higher and higher. Um, the ranking stands around 15,000, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm not gonna be too happy because if I have two or three bad game weeks, I will definitely drop immediately. Now, we all spoke about the set and forget goalkeepers, and it's actually worked out really, really well. Um, now, of course, set and forget, you want an expensive goalkeeper so you can guarantee yourself to, to kind of get these kind of points. But, I mean, as you can see, a 4.5 goalkeeper doing bits for us is fantastic. Um, Trippier was the guy that I bought into my team. I removed Mendy because he was not going to play. Bought in Trippier and look at that. 11 points, assisted and got that clean sheet. Two bonus points. I mean, what else could I ask for? Fantastic transfer. Really, like, I was already thinking about bringing this guy anyway because Tottenham's fixtures were looking good. And I'm, I'm so glad that I actually bought him in. So 11 points helped me so, so much. Now, this was a little bit of a gamble. So, Chelsea versus Liverpool. Now, my idea was at least one of the teams will probably do better than the other, right? And it looked really good near the end when Alonso was keeping that clean sheet. He was actually on a bonus points as well. So, it looked really good, but Sturridge with an amazing goal just cancel that out and these things happen guys um now i could have went with bennett and bennett prob probably was the safer option but basically i i took a risk i took a risk like i gambled to to get more points with alexandra arnold with alonso because these players not only they can keep a clean sheet but they can score on their assist and probably get more than six points so i went for a little bit of gamble but you know, it didn't pay off, and these things happen. Now, my midfielders didn't really do that well. Um, silver playing, which was a bonus. Um, yeah, only three points. And Hazard, though, scored an incredible goal. Maximum three bonus points. And this guy is looking like... Oh, man. It's, the, the, the Chelsea team itself, like, when I look at it, they are very, very solid. They're a very solid team. They got a few backup um, players as well. Uh, you know, great substitutes to come onto the field. Um, a great manager. Just you know, it's just everything's clicking right now, and that is just bringing out more and better performance for for Hazard. And this could be the year for this guy. So yeah, a beautiful, beautiful ten points. Really, really happy with that. And yeah, next up we got money. Not really looking good, guys. Uh, I brought him into my team um, after game week four while I was using my wild card. <sighs> yeah, it's not really uh, going well for Mane. It's not really performing well. Well, it's actually performing, but it's not really bringing the points. One point. I guess i got to still stick with this guy because Liverpool's fixtures are going to go good again. Um, so we've got to wait and see. Richarlison was another person that I brought into my team. Um, was expecting a lot from him. I um, was expecting a lot from that game. Everton versus um, and Fulham. 
But yeah, Everton with that three goals and he actually, you know, was not even a part of them, which kind of sucked. But these things happen. You've got to try and bring in someone who's got a high chance to get something and didn't really work out with him this time. Uh, Mitrovic, uh, one point, not really... Was, actually, I was expecting something from him, but still good fixtures for him to come through. Great, great bargain option if you want to attack her. Aguero... Just before he was going to get substituted, he scored a goal. Eight points as well because of the two bonus points. Helped out so, so much. 16 points overall because of that captaincy was just needed badly. Um, now, a lot of people are thinking about removing Manchester City players. And, you know, Pep was talking about a girl maybe, you know, playing with an injury. And... I don't know. I think I could get rid of him to bring someone else. Um, and there is the the international week coming through as well. And this could give him an option to kind of rest up, you know, get better, get fit. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. There's a the little plan that I'm going to go through near the end. And Wilson, five points. Thank God he got, he's got something. He could have got so much more. He missed like a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Plus, he would have had extra... Oh, he could have took the penalty as well. Why did you not take the penalty? Frustrating. But at least he got something. So, that's all it matters. And so, yeah. Madison was my first bench because I thought, you know what? I put him on my first bench just in case Silva doesn't play, then I can bring him on. He got an assist. Bennett, I, w I already told you guys why I went for these guys because I went for a little bit more higher risk to get more points. Didn't really work out. wan was on my last bench. So that was my review uh, for game week seven. I'm happy with it, with the score that I have. I, I sh I, like, I was hoping to get a little bit more, maybe up to about 70 mark, but it didn't really happen. But I can't really complain too much. So let's go on to game week eight. There's a few options that I'm going to talk about. Um, I haven't really thought of who I'm going to bench, who I'm going to play. And who are my transfers are going to be. So what I'm going to do is just talk about a few things. What I'm thinking about. So far. What you're seeing right now. It is not 100% certain. Meaning there are going to be a lot of changes. Um, to my team. There's going to be a lot of. Like I, I need to watch the Champions League. I need to see what's happening with them games. To make my final decision on my team. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another video on Thursday and I'm going to talk about a few players that I'm going to be transferring um, before Friday. And don't forget, guys. Oh, my God. Do not forget. Friday is the deadline. Friday is the deadline. Not Saturday. Friday is the deadline. October the 5th um, before 7. Just... Just saying, because there's a lot of managers out there forgets because it's on a Friday. Uh, and yeah, just let you know, Friday is the deadline. Um, so, as you can see, you know, Trippier against Cardiff. Great home fixture for Spurs to get. Massive, massive score here. Uh, I'll go through the transfers in a second. Anyway. Wan-Bissaka, uh, you know, um, Crystal Palace versus Wolves. I'm going to go for both of them. I'm just going to hope that, you know, one of them gets the clean sheet. But the best thing is I'm going to hope that there's no goals, there's nothing, and they both keep that clean sheet. Um, nil nil will be fantastic. Alonso against Southampton could be ideal for him to get something, like bring some returns. Hazard for now is going to be my captain. But if I bring a player like uh, Harry Kane, then they uh, this might change. Madison, like this guy has been performing really, really well, guys. Since I brought him in, he's been returning every since. It's fantastic. He's look at that price and that um, select. Oh my god, it's just gonna rise and rise. Give me all the money with him. Mane, I need to hold Mane for a little bit more longer because. You know, they do have a decent, decent amount of fixtures coming through after Manchester City. Even with this game, Manchester City game, that he could get something. But slowly but surely, they, trust me guys, this plan that I have in my mind could change everything. Um, Richarlison. Okay. 
if I get rid of Silver and bring someone else that I think that could do well in their game, then Richarlison will be on my bench. I've got too many good players now, so I need to make a big decision, but I don't mind this kind of stuff because there are rotations around and you need to be prepared for it. Even if you've got a decent bench, it's fantastic for the long run. That means you're not going to make too many transfers. Um, yes, there will be problems where you know you have a, a lot of points on your bench, but you've got a lot of options to think about, which is really good. Um, and yeah, Fulham against uh, Arsenal could be a chance for Fulham to try and turn things around. Wilson against Watford. Not really expecting too much here with him. There might be a chance for him to, you know, be on the bench. Maybe I could go for five in midfield, but you guys let me know what you think. Or, you know, I could remove Silvos. I don't know, something like this. There is so many options right now. It's too... Like, I need to wait... Basically, I need to wait for the Champions League games to be finished because Tottenham's playing, you know. Chelsea's playing as well with the other cup. And Arsenal, you know, all these big teams are playing... I need to wait because there might be some injuries. Um, so yeah, uh, what what was what was I doing? There we go. And uh, yeah, and Agüero playing against Liverpool. So I think I need to make a transfer. I need to make a transfer to make it e look even better for me for game week eight. Um, let's have a quick look now. Brighton against West Ham. This could be Brighton's time to kind of change things around because they've got good kind of fixtures. Burnley as well against Huddersfield. I'm looking at Burnley players here. And definitely Spurs against Cardiff. Now, we could all go into this trap where we'll bring um, Harry Kane into our team and he doesn't do anything, which could suck and hurt our teams a lot. Um, so, yeah. And obviously, a special Sunday is going to be an incredible day for the, for us who's got um, players like here. So, not really certain on which players that I'm going to go with and how my formation is going to line up. Uh, what I'll do, I'll create another video and I'll post it on my Twitter account as well if I'm going to be making any good changes. Now, as for the transfers, I've got one free transfer and I've got 0 0.2 in the bank. Now, I need to... I think... I need to make at least one transfer because there are some great fixtures for a certain team and I want to try and gain points from them. Now, depends on our silver. I, 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 no, you know what? It doesn't mean. I think I need to get rid of silver because there might be a lot of rotations with him and he's not really performing as, as I expected. Um, he's only got two goals. He hasn't really brought any assists into the team as well, which kind of sucks. And I can't take a risk on that. It's expensive as well. And I need more returns. And as you can see, like Madison, he's only 6.7, 6.9. He's bringing so much points than Silver right now. So I need a player that is going to do really well short term. Or maybe even a long term. It depends on what player I bought. So if I get rid... So what I'm going to do is just going to remove these three. I'm going to show you guys like three uh, options of what I'm thinking about. Um, for silver now the first option is going to be obviously a Tottenham midfielder now I could go with Song of, or I could go for Mora like this 7.4 right that means you know I'm doubling up on Spurs players and they got great fixture against um, Cardiff now it all depends on what happens in the Champions League of course but this is a great option against Cardiff and maybe even West Ham. Even with their form, you know, Tottenham could get something good there. Um, there's another option player. There's another player that I'm thinking about is Gunmudson. Great, great fixture for him, um, you know, against Huddersfield. But his long term against uh, Manchester City or, you know, and Chelsea is not really looking good. But a decent, decent player for that fixture and maybe later on you know you can bench him so let's just add him there just for the sake of it and just to give you guys a few different kind of things to think about and my next option is going to be not card i think it's about time brighton do something here um he's been doing pretty well against uh, big teams you know he's been assisting look at that he's got three assists one um, goal 
He's like one of those players that is doing really well for their team. Um, like their main player in that team. And 5.5, I don't think you can't, like, I don't think you can go wrong with a 5.5 player that could get you a lot of big returns. If you look at Brighton's fixtures, oh my god. It's just a sea of goodness here. A great home fixtures as well. A chance for Brighton to get some kind of points. So, here is my plan. Um, it might not go as I expect it, um, but it is something to think about and it might work out in the long term. So, hear me out, um, but you let me know in the comments below what you think. If you can adjust the plan and to make it better, let me know as well because, you know, I always read these comments. So, let's just say I remove silver for game week 8 and I bring the Brighton player 5.5, right? Brighton's got great fixtures. Look at that sea of amazing fixtures for Brighton to get something at least. And this guy could be the one. 5.5, a cheap option. And then I have 3.2 in the bank. Now, I could take my first hit of the season. I don't mind doing this because of the rank that I have. I do not mind taking a little bit of a risk to try something different. Um, I can bring in Harry Kane for game week 8 and I will captain him. So if I captain him, there's a high chance for him to get a decent amount of points against that Cardiff team. Of course, it all depends on the Champions League results and what happens. You know, there might be some rest. Or so I don't know. We'll have to see what happens, right? Then there might be some injuries and stuff. So uh, if I'm going to make any kind of transfer, it's probably going to be near the end of the deadline. So this is the plan, right? Bringing two players in for game week eight. Two players that could get a lot of points. Could get my four points back. Then what I can do for game week nine. Yes, for game week nine. I'm a little bit of a head. But as you can see, game week nine, you know, game week eight to game week nine, there's the international break, right? So, Manchester City, you know, they've got a lot of players out there. And, you know, Aguero could take this, this chance to rest up in that international week and be ready for this game. So, what I can do is remove Kane, bring Aguero back to my team with that free transfer. Then I have another, like, 3.2 to spend. And what I could do is upgrade Mane, take another four-point hit for now, and then remove Mane for Salah. And there we go. So this is the plan. So this means that I can captain Harry Kane for game week eight. I can captain Aguero for, uh, against um, Burnley at home in game week nine. And then I can captain Salah for that beautiful game against Cardiff at home in game week 10. So that is the plan. Oh, I know. It's weird to have Salah back into the team. But he's such a threat. I know he's expensive. But what happened here is I have created a team that is doing pretty damn decent and what i'm doing is upgrading the players and bringing in players that i think that could do really well for those fixtures alone so it's a bit of a different strategy i know a lot of people are bringing harry kane but they're not really thinking about removing him and then bringing in salah into the team as well so and the team that i have gathered up here is pretty damn decent i mean i am doing pretty well in the rankings as well with this team and what i'm doing is upgrading a few players or downgrading or putting players you know giving them a higher chance to get a lot of points in them games so you let me know in the comments below what you think you let me know if you if you think that there is a better plan so i can think about um, so what I'm going to do is gather all the information and I'm going to create a video on Thursday before the deadline. And I might actually live stream to hear your thoughts. But 
yeah i think that's about it guys those are the, some of the plans that i'm thinking to do sometimes you need to make these plans to make it work for you right obviously there's always injuries involved and stuff like that and there might be some rotations but i i, I don't know like i think a plan is is always a good option to have so that's about it sorry if the video was longer than usual but i thought i'll bring out so much more information out for you guys and my my thoughts because i know a lot of people were asking um, more videos for fbl and i'm definitely gonna make more and yeah i think that's about it Whew. you let me know in the comments below what you think um follow me on twitter guys trust me follow me on twitter that's where i upload all my updates all my comments and it, i have a brilliant time in the weekends and yeah Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the Champions League. See what happens on that. And uh, don't forget, the transfer is uh, the transfer deadline is on Friday. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.